Hello everyone! In this Rostu and Gazebo tutorial, we explain how to perform three important tasks. Number one, we explain how to install Gazebo in ROS2. We are using the Iron Nirvini ROS distribution. Number two, we explain how to test installation by running a test example that you can see over here. The test example is a simple differential drive robot. Number three, we explain how to control the robot by sending velocity commands. The velocity commands are sent by using the Linux command line. For example, I can use this terminal window to send the desired velocity. If I want to move my robot, I will send this command. And as you can see over here, the robot moves. If I want to stop my robot, I will simply send zero over here for my velocity. And as you can see over here, the robot stopped. If I want to reverse the direction of motion, again, I can send a command for that by just reversing the sign of velocity. And here it is. But before I start with explanations, I need to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as almost 500 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot! Ok, let's start with explanations. The first step is to check the Linux and ROS2 distributions. Namely, in order to run the example from this tutorial, you need to have the correct Linux and ROS2 distributions. We are using Linux Ubuntu 22.04 and ROS2 Iron Irvini distributions. We strongly suggest you to install this combination of Linux ROS2 distributions. In fact, we created a video tutorial that explains how to install ROS2 Iron Irvini. A link to that tutorial is given in the description below. However, with small modifications, the example from this tutorial can be executed in other ROS2 distributions. Ok, let's first learn how to verify the Linux version or Linux distribution. For that purpose, we will open a new terminal. And in the new terminal window, we will execute this command. This command will give the current Linux version. You can see it over here and it can give more details. OK. The next step is to verify our ROS2 version. To do that, we first need to source our ROS environment by sourcing setup.bash. And after that, we will run this command. And as the result, we will see our current ROS2 distribution. In my case, it's IRON. This is an abbreviation for IRON Irvini. The step number two is to install Gazebo. Let's close our original terminal and let's start from scratch. I always like to start from scratch. So open a new terminal and before you run any ROS2 node or a package, you need to source the environment. That is, you need to create an underlay. We do that by sourcing or executing this setup file. Let's do that. Here it is. OK, to install Gazebo, we need to execute this command. Note over here, iron. It's written iron. If you're using some other versions of ROS2, instead of IRON over here, you will type your ROS2 version. OK. You need to enter your password. And here it is. You can see over here that all the requirements are satisfied and Gazebo is not installed. Actually, before creating this video tutorial, I already installed Gazebo. In your case, you will see the installation progress. So maybe after half a minute or minute, Gazebo will be installed by running this command. Next, we need to install Gazebo ROS2 core tools. To do that, we need to execute this command. 
And as you can see over here, all the requirements are satisfied in my case. However, in your case, you will see the installation progress. Okay, and finally, we can test our installation. To do that, we need to type gazebo. And if everything is properly installed, you should see this window and voila, congratulations. If you see this window, you have properly installed gazebo. Next, let us learn how to run a gazebo demo. We will run a gazebo world file in order to test everything. The gazebo world files contain ROS2 plugins. Gazebo world files are given over here. So let's navigate to that folder and let's see all the world files. To do that, we need to execute this command. But before we do that, let's close our gazebo window and let's go back to our terminal. And let's type this. We will go to this folder and we will type lsl to see the structure of this folder. Here it is. Here are all the worlds and all the examples that come with Gazebo. For us, the most interesting example is this example. This is actually a world and example of a differential drive robot. Okay, let us now learn how to run this example. To run this example, we need to run this command. Let me just change the size of this window, move it a little bit up. Here it is. We type gazebo and then we have double dash verbose, which means that we want to print messages while gazebo is running. And we need to specify the path to our world. And here it is. This is the absolute path. And this is the name of the file, gazebo ROS differential drive demo world that we are executing. And let's press enter. And let's see what happens. Here it is. Here's our example. Let's quickly learn how to navigate gazebo. If I want to pan my view, that is if I want to move my view left or right, I need to press the left mouse button and to move the mouse. Okay, I can zoom in by using the third mouse button, that is by using the roller button. And if I press the right mouse button, I can zoom in and zoom out. To rotate the view, I need to press the middle mouse button, that is the roller button, and I need to move my cursor left or right. Okay. Let us now learn how to move the robot. But before we learn that, let's just go back to our terminal and let's see what's happening over here. Uh -huh. Here is some very useful information that can provide us more insights into what's happening behind the scenes. In the ROS2 graph structure, Gazebo is a single node. That is, demo.differential drive is a single node. We can see that this node is actually subscribed to this topic. This topic is used to send the velocity command. We will explain that in the sequel. On the other hand, we can see that our node is actually advertising odometry messages to this topic. Odometry is the measurement of the position and angle or the measurement of velocity and angular velocity. Okay, let us now open a new terminal and let us source our ROS2 environment. Next, let us list all the available topics. To do that, we need to execute this command, ROS2 topic and then list. Aha, we can see the topics. Here is our topic for sending the velocity commands and here is the topic for receiving the odometry measurements. Let's learn how to send the velocity commands. How to do that? Well, to send the velocity commands, we need to execute this command. ROS2 topic pub and then we need to specify the name of the topic and the type of the message. Let me now change the size of this window so you can see this command better. So it's ROS2 topic, publish, P-U-B stands for publish, we are publishing 
to this topic and what we are publishing. We are actually publishing a data structure. This data structure is geometry message and it's a twist. And we specify only linear velocity. We specify x component and all the other components will be zero and we set the magnitude one. And we add minus one over here. So the velocity command is actually one over here in the x direction. Now let me bring back our gazebo window and let's see what will happen once I run this command. Okay, we can see that our robot is moving. It's moving in the x direction with constant velocity equal to one. And the robot will move, move and move if we don't stop it. So to stop the robot, we actually need to do the following. Here, instead of one, we need to specify zero. So let's see what happens. Now, if I specify zero over here, let me now just move this so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, let's zoom out, move a little bit. Okay, let's bring back the terminal. Okay, now you can see it better. Press enter and here it is. Robot stopped. Let's reverse the direction. To reverse the direction again, over here we need to specify 1 instead of 0. And you can see that robot is actually moving in the same direction. Let me now change the direction to minus 1. This is what I need to do. I need to correct myself. So here it should be minus 1. Okay, and now the robot is moving in the opposite direction as we expected. Next, let's learn how to obtain odometry information from our robot. Open a new terminal while the other two terminals are still active and in this new terminal source the ROS environment. Then, we need to echo the information that's being transmitted through the topic demo, odom demo. So let's see the information. And here it is. Okay, so I will now press Ctrl C and I will analyze what actually is happening over here. Notice that you're actually receiving odometry information with certain frequency. I think it's around one hertz, that is one message per second. And we can see what's happening over here. We can see our current twist it's linear, we can see the velocity, the velocity y direction is zero, the velocity in the x direction is minus one, we can see that the velocity in z direction is zero, and we can see that the angular velocities are zero. Here we can see the covariance matrices and their entries. Okay, and he, we can see also the pose. The pose consists of location of the robot and orientation. Currently, the pose is x, y, z. It's pretty much far away in the x direction, and we can see the orientation. This is actually quaternion for your orientation. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot, and have a nice day.